every person that's out there watching this program tonight. Father, I pray that you would anoint the message this night. Lord, I pray that you would open the hearts of the people out there, that, that they would understand tonight and hear what the voice of the Holy Spirit is speaking unto them and unto the church. Father, you said in Revelations in chapter 2 and 3, you told each and every church, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear. Open their spiritual ears tonight. Let them hear and discern tonight, Father God, what you're saying to the church in this time and in this hour, Father God. Father, I thank you for anointing the message. I thank you for anointing me, Father God, as a deliverer of the message that I'll deliver it and utter it forth the way it should be uttered and delivered, Father God, and to your people that they'll understand it. Father, give us simplicity of the word tonight. Give us understanding. And let me preach the word simple to them that they'll understand tonight, Father God. I thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit quickening the people and anointing them and anointing me to preach this. And Father, I thank you in the precious name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. God bless each and every one of you out there tonight. We welcome you to the Word of Power Gospel Hour. The Lord gave me a good message tonight. I've been working on this message for a long time. I'm just going to give you part of it. I'm going to touch on the main things tonight. If you would like more information uh, on the, the messages that we're preaching on and teaching on, you can inquire by writing our post office box. If you have a pen or pencil, you can write this down. The name of our, our post office box and ministry is Word of Power Gospel Hour. It's post office box 5424. P.O. 5424, and the zip code is 40255, 40255. The message I have tonight, you may want some more information on this. We have plenty more information. I don't have time to go through all of it. This is about a, a two or three hour teaching to go through the whole thing, but I'm touching on the main points tonight. And those of you who have ears to hear tonight, listen to what the Holy Spirit's saying. You know, I've been talking to people for a while on this TV. When God called us, he gave us this camera to preach on the TV. I, I, I didn't want to come on here. But I was obedient to the Lord. Because he made a way for us to get this camera. We didn't even have a way. Didn't have the finances. God made, gave us a miracle. I've been on here preaching repentance to the people. And to the city and to the churches. You know, sometimes we look at the people. And we don't look at the God in them people. You know, there's a lot of people out there who don't like me. There's a lot. There's ministers in this city that in the past, I pray God forgives you, but you've judged me in the flesh. You know, we, we need to quit judging one another. I've talked on this in a lot of messages in the past. That very person that God's putting through the fires and is delivering may be the very one that you touched in the flesh that God's doing something in the spirit, and he's changing that person. And you know, we need to let the prophets and the apostles come back into the churches they're the foundation of the church with Jesus Christ being the cornerstone. We need to let them come back into the church because I'm telling you, church, there is coming, the Lord show me, a famine for the word of the Lord in these last days. There's, there's gross darkness coming on all the land. And I'm going to tell you what God's wanting out of his church in this hour. That's why I have this message tonight. The name of this message tonight is Where is the Fruit? Where is the Fruit? That's the name of this message tonight. That's what God is saying to his church. Where is the fruit? Where is the fruit? That's what God's wanting in his church again. The fruits is the character and nature of, of, of Almighty God himself and the Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians 5, it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. Be love, joy, peace, long-suffering, meekness, gentleness, mildness, faith, and all the rest of them. That's the fruit of the Spirit. This is what God wants out of his people. You wonder what's going on in the churches. Some of you ministers, I've been on here preaching repentance. There's some of you out here, if you'll humble yourself and you'll get rid of the pride and everything else that's hindering your life, God's been trying to say some things. You know, they looked at Jesus in the natural, the Pharisees and the scribes, they looked at Jesus in the natural. They judged him in the natural. They looked and said, is not this Jesus the man? Is not this Jesus the son of Joseph and Mary? Is not this Jesus the carpenter, the son of Joseph? They even said about Jesus, could a prophet come out of Nazareth? Could anything good come out of Nazareth? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. 
They missed their day of visitation because they wasn't listening. They was living under the law. And let me tell you something today. God's wanting fruit back in this church. They was looking at Jesus, the man. They overlooked their day of visitation. They wasn't looking at the God in Jesus. They was looking at God, the man. When a man and a woman is anointed of God, listen to what they have saying. Listen to what they have to say. The Holy Ghost is speaking through them. The Holy Spirit spoke through Jesus to the people. But they looked at the outward. They didn't look at the inward. They wasn't listening to the Holy Spirit. That's the same way it is in the church today. Oh, hallelujah. That's why God put me on the TV. I didn't want to come on TV. I argued with God, but I was obedient. I was obedient. There's some of your ministers out there. I've told you, you've judged me in the past. God was doing work in me. He was doing something in me. You know what? I've been through the fires. I've been tested. But God burnt the sin out of my life. That's what the fire is for, to burn sin out of your life, to burn up the shaft. And we'll get into this today and tonight. There's some of you out there, Pentecostals, you, you, you got your eyes, and I find this in the charismatic and the Pentecostal circles mostly. They get over here to moving for God, and they get into pride. They get into self-pride, and they get haughty, and they get unteachable. Hey, we need to humble ourselves again. Hey, the Lord of all glory came and humbled himself in the fashion and the form of man. He moved into gifts without measure. He moved into anointing without measure. We have a measure. But I'm going to tell you something. He was humble. He wasn't prideful. He reached out to anybody. And he reached out because of love. He was motivated by love and mercy. Listen, we need to get it back in the church again. I've been preaching on that love and mercy. We need the fruits of, uh, of the Spirit in the church again. That's what God's saying to His church. Some of you ministers are wondering, going, what's going on? What's going on? You're not moving like you used to move. We've hit a brick wall. I hit a brick wall. And you know what? God wants fruit developed out of our life. I walked into a brick wall. I'm not moving the way I used to move. You know why? Because God wants fruit in our life. Some of you wonder why your churches have gone down. I've been on here preaching repentance, repent, repent, repent. You know why the devil got kicked out of heaven over in Isaiah uh, uh, 14, Ezekiel 28? It talks about Satan. He was kicked out of heaven because of pride. And I'm going to tell you, we're in the last church age of, of Laodicea over in, in Revelation chapter 3. It talks about the last church age of Laodicea. These people were full of pride. They was lukewarm, cold, full of pride. They didn't need Jesus no more. They didn't need God no more. They were self-sufficient. Oh, we need him. I need him every second of the day to lead and guide me. Hallelujah. And there are some of you ministers, your churches have gone down. And you wonder why you're not moving the way you used to move. God's requiring. There's a shaking going on right now. I don't know if you know it. I believe a lot of Pentecostals and Charismatics are learning this. And people within the church. We need the gifts of the Spirit to do God's work. But we also need the fruits of the Spirit. To have God's character and nature. That's what God's doing within the church right now. God is developing character and nature. His character and nature and developing it in each and every one of us. It doesn't glorify God if you're charismatic Pentecostal or, or if you're anything. And you're over here operating and moving into gifts. And you're raising the dead, healing the sick, the lames walking and everything. And then you come over here and you get in the flesh. After the anointing of the Holy Spirit leaves you and the gifts quit operating and you come over here in the natural and you get back in the flesh and you live like the devil. You become a stumbling block to people. That's why God's requiring the fruits back into the church again. God is holy. He said, be ye holy for I am a holy God. Oh, we need the fruit. The fruits of the Spirit is the character and nature of Jesus Christ. I'm almighty living God. I'm going to go into these scriptures, but I'm talking. I've talked to many ministers that's out there. I've been on this TV going on nine months speaking and talking to you. I've preached with humility. I've preached under the anointing. God has spoken through me. He has spoken through me. Listen to what God's saying. Humble yourselves and repent. You wonder, some of you, you've moved gloriously in the gifts in the past. But you wouldn't let God touch you. You wouldn't let God develop his character and nature in you. You wouldn't let God de 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 deliver you. Listen to what I'm saying tonight. I love you. I love you. And God loves you. But God can only take you to a certain place and a certain point. And if you're not producing fruit anymore, I'm going to tell you what, you're not going to be able to move in the gifts because the anointing God's going to bring judgment on you. The fire of God is going to burn you, out, burn, you out instead of, uh, burn you up instead of burn you out. The fire of the Spirit burns up the shaft. 
the dross, the tan. It burns up the impurities in our life. It burns up the sin. That's what the fire is sent to do to purify us. Oh, hallelujah. Listen to what I'm saying. Some of you churches have gone way down. You know why? Because of pride. The way God's used you in the past. Listen to what this preacher's saying tonight. Don't look at me and judge me in the flesh. Some of you judge me in the flesh out there already. Listen to what the God in me is speaking to you. Listen to what the Holy Spirit is speaking through me to you. Listen, we're not going to be able to move the way we used to move. I can't. I just had to be delivered that God could purge me. The Bible says every branch that bears fruit, he's going to purge it. He's going to purify it and bring forth more fruit. He's wanting fruit. The gifts don't glorify God. It's his gifts. We don't impress God how we move with the gifts. What impresses God is the fruit that you have in your life. Is your character and is your nature like Almighty God? Some of you keep resisting the working of the Holy Spirit. That's why you come to a wall. You can't go no further. You can't move. You can't turn around and go back, and you can't go forward. You're stuck. You're in a stuck mode. You ever been in a stuck mode? I have. God wants to purge you and cleanse you and develop fruit in you. I'm going to give you scriptures for this. But I'm talking to some ministers out there. You need to humble yourself under the working of the mighty hand of God. It says over in Isaiah and Jeremiah, it says, Can, can the uh, uh, clay tell the potter how to form it and what to make out of it? We can't tell God. God tells us. He's the potter. We're the clay. We're the clay. He's molding. Are you going to yield to that molding? Are you going to yield to the work of God? Because he's doing it that we can produce fruit to have his character and nature. Listen, you're not going to take the gifts of heaven with you. All the gifts one day is going to pass away. When you die, the Holy Ghost goes back to be with God. If you're born again, saved, and you're right with him, your spirit goes to be with the Lord. Be absent with the body is to be present with the Lord. So everything, prophecy, we only prophesy in part, we only know in part, but with that which is whole, that we that's left behind and are still alive, when Jesus Christ comes back, we're going to be changed, twinkling of an eye, to be like him. And I tell you what, when he that's whole and perfect comes, all that that's in part is going to pass away. We're not going to have that no more. But it's the love of God and the character and nature of God is what we're going to have to take with us. If you go with me here in the scripture, I hope I'm pre I hope I'm reaching some of you tonight because your ministries have gone down, 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 down. God wants to humble you. God's talking to you. God's speaking to you. You know who you are out there. You know who you are. You know your ministries are about gone. You need to produce fruit in your life again. You need to be fruit, uh, fruit producers. You need to humble yourself. Especially the Pentecostals and Charismatics. I'm not down on Pentecostals and Charismatics. It's the devil that's down on you. He caused you to get puffed up with pride because God's using you in the gifts. Listen, the gifts and the calling are without repentance. But the character and nature of God is with repentance. I'm going to show you this scripture. I'm going to show you scripture right now. Let's go over here. I'm going to show you scripture in the Word. What I'm saying, I'll give you plenty of scriptures and back it up. This ain't Ronnie's teaching. This is the Holy Ghost teaching. It's the Word of God. And I'm not taking the Word of God out of context neither. I'm preaching it in a setting. And I'm preaching the message the Lord gave me. There's some of you out there, if you'll humble yourself and you'll repent, you'll get your ministry back. God can't let you keep moving the way you're moving and operating because the anointing one day is going to bring judgment on you. It will bring judgment on you. It brought judgment on Ananias and Sapphira over in the book of Acts one time. They lied to the Holy Ghost. When the anointing of God was there, they fell over dead. Listen, the anointing of God would judge you. Uh, judgments already began in the house of God. I'm here to tell you. Oh, uh, you people out in the church, you wondering. I know you're wondering as well as I'm wondering. God, you used to use me. I used to move gloriously for you. I've seen all kinds of miracles. But God's wanting fruit in the church again. God's wanting fruit. I may have to come back and preach this message again. If you want to know more on this, i got plenty of scriptures. Write us. Write us at our post office box. i got plenty more on this. It will bless you, and it will change you. If you let God change you, you see, the fruits change you. The gifts don't change you. The gifts you can raise the dead, that ain't going to change you. It's the character and nature of Jesus Christ being developed in you that's going to change you. And that's a process. Oh, hallelujah. That's a process. The fruits have to be developed. The gifts were just given. That was a free gift to God. But the fruits have to be developed. I got scripture for all this. I don't have time to go into all of it. Write us. If you want more information on this, write, write us. Write us. I have it. This will bless you. 
and it will cause you to change, and it will cause you to be anointed and go on with God and do what God's caused you to do. And some of you out there, you wonder why your churches are going down. God's been shaking the church. You know, when you shake a tree, if the bad fruit's on it, it's going to fall off. There is a shaking going on in the church, and God's shaking ministers. He's shaking everybody. And if you've got some rotten fruit hanging on you, it's going to fall off. You hearing what I'm saying? It's falling off of me. I just got delivered some things. God said, uh-uh, let's sit down now. Let's, let's uh, get some deliverance. And I just got delivered. But I'm bearing new fruit. He shook off the old fruit. You see, the old fruit, the, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace. You know, the devil, the Bible says, make the tree, tree either corrupt or make it good. You know, the devil pr produces fruit too. God's, uh, the first three fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace over Galatians 5. You know what the fruits of the devil is? It's, it's just the opposite. Love, hate, joy, depression, oppression, peace, torment, and confusion. That's his fruit. He develops fruit too, but it's bad fruit. God develops good fruit. God don't want bad fruit hanging on us no more. Hallelujah. He wants good fruit. And that's why some of your ministers are going through what you're going through. Over in Malachi chapter 3, he, he, Jesus said, I'll come as refiner's fire and I'll come as fuller soap. And I will refine the sons of Levi. That's the ministers that they may offer up unto me an offering unto righteousness. Are you going through the furnace of affliction? Jesus said, every branch in me that does not bear fruit will be cast into the fire. I've got scriptures for all this. Every tree in me that does not bear fruit shall be cast into the fire. You know what this message is called tonight? God's looking down on the church and God is saying, where's the fruit? Where's the fruit? Where's the fruit? Now, I know many of you all, uh, we're not so spiritual that we're not human too. Many of you remember the old Wendy commercial, the little old lady that come on and drive up Wendy's. She got ordered a, a Wendy's hamburger. Or, or it wasn't a Wendy's. It was a hamburger she wanted. She drove up and she got this great big bun and a little bitty piece of meat on it. And the, 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 the little old lady said, where's the beef? Where's the beef? You know what God's saying? Huh. Hallelujah. God gave you them gifts, but he, you know what he wants in return? God's saying, where's the fruit? Where's the fruit? I'm looking down on my vineyard. Where's the fruit? That's what God's saying today. Amen. Every branch that does not bear fruit shall be cast into the fire. Are you in the fires? Are you in the fires today? Are you a minister in the fire? It's because God wants to produce fruit in it. And we're not yielding to his working hand of the Holy Spirit. Over in Matthew chapter 13, it talks about the sower and the seed. Where did he sow the seed? In the heart. The fruit is an inward development. The fruit has to be developed inwardly. You've got to have a heart change. Back over here, when John the Baptist said over here in, in chapter 3 of Matthew, Bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance. In other words, he was saying, Go bring forth fruits worthy to repent of. That's what God's saying in his church today. The gifts and the calling over in Romans, uh, uh, over here in the book of Romans. I'm going to show you scripture here. All glory. Listen to what I'm saying tonight too, church. Romans 11, 29. For the gifts and the calling are God without repentance. You get them. They're a free gift on the day of, of, of salvation. You get, on, on, and when you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, you get all the gifts that goes along with him. They were given it to you. If you pay a price, he'll use you. But listen what John the Baptist said. Bring forth, therefore, fruits, meat for repentance. God's wanting us to bring fruits. On the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2. The day of Pentecost. You know what Pentecost was? A lot of charismatics talk the word, but they don't know the word. They talk it. They don't walk it. Sorry to say, I, me too. Hey, when I'm preaching to you, I'm preaching to me too. It's going to get down on me too, because I want to move on with God. I want to move on with him. I want to be like Jesus. He said he's coming back after the church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. I want him to remove my spots with that spot remover. I want him to arn out my wrinkles and remove all the blemishes because I want to be like he is when he comes back after me. And then twinkling and I will change to be like him. you got to overcome in this walk. He that endures to the end shall be saved. He that endures to the end shall be saved. That's Matthew 24. Now, let's go over here. I'm going to show you something. On Pentecost, Pentecost. Let's, let's look at Pentecost and see what it was. Oh, hallelujah. Exodus. Let's go over here. I'm going to show you something. 
So many charismatics and Pentecostals, I found it in charismatic circles and Pentecostal circles, they get their eyes on the glory and on the gifts. They don't go after the fruit. Oh, listen to what I'm saying. I've, I've done this. I hinder my own walk with God. I've done it. I've been sit down because God wants us to bear fruit today. You can move in the gifts, but we need the fruit. Watch here. Go with me over here. It says over here in Exodus chapter 23, God said in verse 14, Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. And verse 16, And the feast of harvest, the first fruits of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering, which is at the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field. Then verse 19, The first of the first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring into the house of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not see a kid in his mother's milk. On the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, they was baptized in the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you something here. They were to bring, Pentecost was a feast unto God. One of the feasts he told them to keep forever. Jesus over in chapter, uh, John in chapter 15, he said to bear fruit. I'm going to go over here in a second. He said, the first of the first fruits of thy land, thou shalt bring into the house of the Lord thy God. That's what God wants us to bring into his house today. On the day of Pentecost, they was given the Holy Ghost and all his gifts and the anointing too. He gave you everything you need to do your work for him and his kingdom. But what he didn't give you was the gifts. Because on the day of Pentecost, that was a free gift. Just like Jesus Christ was a free gift unto the earth and to the church. He birthed the church. His death gave us life and birthed the church in power. They was empowered to do the work Jesus called them to do on the day of Pentecost. But on the day of Pentecost, you go back over here, chapter 23, over here in Exodus. We was, they was to bring their fruits into the house of God. Hear what I'm saying out there, you Pentecostals and Charismatics today. Hear what the voice of the Lord is saying, what the Holy Ghost is saying to the church again. He's wanting us to bring the fruits into the house of the Lord again. Because you was given him within you. His gifts in here came with him from the Lord himself. He gave us the gifts. Jesus said, it's expedient for you that I go away. Because if I go not away, my father cannot send back the promise. The promise of what? The Holy Ghost. You was empowered and given the gifts and the anointing to do what God called Jesus to do. And then you was given it with a measure. You was given that to do his works today. Are you using it for his works or are you using it for your works? Are you using it to glorify him? Are you using it to glorify you and build your ministry in a big name and a big church? Or oh, use it for the right purpose and God will just give you more fruit. He'll give you more gifts and he'll give you more anointing. If your heart's right, the fruits, I'm telling you something tonight. Listen to what I'm saying. Some of you out there need a heart change. And you know I'm speaking the truth to you. You know I'm speaking nothing but the truth. That's why God put me on this TV. I didn't want to be here. But I'll tell you like it is. You know why? Because I love you. There's a devil out here that wants to destroy your fruit. You know what the devil went at after in the Garden of Eden? The first thing he went after was the fruit. Think about that. Think about that. How did he get man to sin? Got him to eat the fruit. The devil wants us to eat our fruit again today. He wants to eat our fruit. You know why? Because that's the character and nature of Almighty living God. He wants to eat our fruit again. He don't care if you're anointed, but if, if you're yielding to him and living like him, he knows people's going to look at that, and you're going to become a stumbling block to them, and they ain't going to listen to you. Even if you raise the dead, they ain't going to listen to you if you live like the devil. Jesus lived a holy, concentrated life. He had the nature and the character of Almighty living God. And that's what he wants produced in his house again today. He's wanting us to bring the fruits back in. He gave the gifts and the anointing. They're his. We don't impress God when we move by the gifts and the anointing. What impresses God is when we have our character and our nature changed to be like Him. That's what impresses God. That has to be developed in you. It's an inward work. You can't plant a seed and a tree grow and then bear fruit. you got to have time for the harvest. It takes time to develop fruits in us. That's why God sent the Holy Spirit back. It's the, uh, Over in Galatians chapter 5, it talks about the fruits of the Spirit. His Spirit, if we'll yield to His change in our heart, it says over Matthew chapter 13, the sower and the seed was sold into their heart. It says down at the end of this over here. Oh, I've got so much teaching on this and so many scriptures, I can't give them all. But I pray you get in the meat of what I'm saying. And I think some of you are out there tonight. Ministers, humble yourself under the hand of Almighty living God. Yield to His work and He wants fruit in your life again. He wants fruit in your life. He wants fruit in your life. Hey, the world ain't impressed no more. The world's seeing signs and wonders wrought by Satan. You know them by the fruits. 
You know them by their fruits in these last days. Even Satan will work signs and wonders. They're counterfeit. They're signs and wonders of Satan. But he can work them. You're not seeing lying signs. You're seeing signs and wonders, but they're counterfeit. They are worked under the power of satanic power. God wants miracles wrought through his Holy Spirit and in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The world's not impressed by signs and wonders no more. They're seeing them wrought by Satan. He's doing signs and wonders. But you know what? Those signs and wonders are going to deceive people, and they're going to be taken to hell with him. We need to turn back to the true power of God. We need the fruits developed in our life again. We need to turn back into the true power of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And you go over here with me, and I'm going to tell you what. God wants fruit developed back in our life again. You know them by their fruits. You know them by their fruits. Glory to God over here in Matthew chapter 13. It talks about some produce fruit. Some came forth. Oh, God, I've got so many scriptures tonight, people. I'll never get to them all. If you'd like to know more on this, it will change your life like it's changed mine. Hallelujah. Over here, it says in, in Matthew chapter 12, it says, Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and the fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by its fruit. God's wanting good fruit again. If you're going to follow him, you're going to have to have good fruit. Hallelujah. Then over here in Matthew 13, it says, But he that received, in verse 23, 13, 23, but he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word, and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. See, it's a work in the heart. It's a heart change. I've been preaching to you people on here for nine months now. Bring forth fruits worthy for repentance. The Holy Ghost was sent to call us unto repentance. That's one of his jobs, to change us, to make our character and nature like Almighty living God. But you're not yielded to his work. And you can't move in the gifts and the power and the glory no more, people. Till we have the fruit in our life. God ain't allowing it. He don't want you to destroy yourself. Hallelujah. Paul said, I bring my body under and bring it into subjection. Subjection to what? Obedience to the word of God. He knew he had to come in line with the word. He could go out and win millions of souls and turn around and lose his own soul. Huh. So fight I, not as one to beat at the air. That's what Paul said. And then he went on to say, Paul knew if he didn't have the fruits in his life. The Bible says to work out your own salvation with trembling and fear. We've got to have the character and nature of Jesus Christ developed within us. That's what's going on in the church. You wonder why you're going through the trials and the fires. The, every branch that does not bear fruit, it will be cast back into the fire. Matthew chapter 7 and, and, and John chapter 15 and, and Matthew chapter 3, it talks about the fire. Jesus will come. He's got a fan in his hand. He'll purge his threshing floor. He'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. The fire is what burns the sin out of you and makes you like Jesus. I pray you got something out of this night. There's so much teaching on this. I don't have time. If you'd like more information on this, write us. Our post office box will be coming on at the end. I would love to get in contact with you and give you more information on this. I have a lot of scripture. God bless you.